Now, when it comes to transit and transportation, we had a long way to go to address our current pedestrian and bicycle safety crisis. We are seeing injuries and deaths at record rates and community demanding change. How would you improve pedestrian and bicycle safety? Yeah, um, great question. So, you know, this is one of those things where my money is where my mouth is. Just like on the last one, I didn't say I uh, worked on statewide legislation to pass uh, the missing middle housing bill. Here, you know, I'm on the board at Seattle Subway. I previously was on the citizen oversight panel at Sound Transit. I'm involved with neighborhood greenways. I'm working on lit I-5. I... To, to me, the only safe street is a street is that it, that is engineered to be safe. And to be a street that is engineered to be safe has some of the following features. Uh, one is it doesn't have long open stretches or really clear visual lines, long, clear visual lines. Two, it doesn't have really wide lanes or series of lanes. Uh, three, it doesn't have wide crossings. Um, so some of it is just starting to actually engineer our streets uh, because in a way that slow people down. Because we know that when people... Do when there are conflicts and there are collisions and people are going slow, uh, there will, first there's less likely to be a collision and second it's much less likely to be nearly so harmful. I mean it's killing thirty people a year and injuring countless more. Um, other things that have been proven to be effective, bike lanes have been proven to just reduce overall harm on a road. Um, while not significantly impairing total vehicle throughput, uh, raised crosswalks, better signalization, no right turn on red, as you mentioned earlier. I think uh, we need to put more imperative language in our complete streets ordinance so that every time we're touching a road, we are moving it toward genuine safe, uh, g- making it genuinely safe and complete. 